During high school, 15 to 18 year olds are beginning to establish a more individual identity. The best adjusted high schoolers belong to more than one peer group or clique. For example, they may participate in lacrosse and in debate, or be involved in community service, play in a band, and spend every summer at the summer camp with longtime camp friends. When adolescents have friendships in more than one group, this allows them to develop their social skills and it also buffer them, buffers them from the distress and isolation that can occur if a relationship with just one social group goes sour. Emotionally healthy teens will be learning to depend on key adults in appropriate ways. They're learning what they can manage on their own and when they need to look to an adult for help. Teenagers feel their feelings intensely and benefit from having multiple outlets for safely managing that intensity. At school, there are often more educational choices and many teens can choose between college prep and vocational courses. There are often classes in the same subject that proceed at different speeds, adding to the number of potential choices they face. After school activities become more competitive and more selective and for some are a path to essential college scholarships. Many teens will face the disappointment of not making a varsity team, not getting a desired role in a school play, or not being accepted into an elite music ensemble. Moving, especially during the middle of a high school year, can put even the most capable teenager at a disadvantage academically and in competitive teen sports or in their other after-school activities. Teenagers now have adult reasoning abilities known as abstract thinking, this is that ability to think about thoughts and be philosophical, but not yet with an adult's more consistent ability to connect those thoughts with appropriate actions. Things often seem unfair to teens, and trusted grown-ups may suddenly seem to be hypocritical or disappointing with the teen's new ability to think in more complicated ways. During high school, many teens learn to drive and often ride with peers who are new drivers. Cars are a rite of passage and a symbol of freedom. They're also risky, an opportunity to get hurt or to hurt others if excellent judgment is not exercised. Most teens report that they have easy access to alcohol, to illegal drugs, and to other people's prescription drugs. Many choose to steer clear or manage to keep use to a minimum, but some will develop lifelong drug and alcohol problems or have a life-changing experience or accident while under the influence. Some teenagers will become sexually active during high school, and some even contract sexually transmitted diseases or become pregnant and then face a difficult set of decisions. It's always a challenge to decide how much to focus on the potential dangers facing teens and how much to focus on the majority who are safely negotiating their lives. By emphasizing the risks, we can easily convey a message that everyone is engaged in these behaviors, and this may normalize dangerous behavior. On the flip side, ignoring these dangers may miss an opportunity to engage a teen in choosing a safer path. So the stakes are high. It's crucial to have a set of rules and expectations that we share, but when teens make a mistake, and most of them do, we always need to welcome our child home warmly. Home needs to be a first choice place to go when a teen feels unsafe or is in trouble. We need to let them know we're glad they're safe and only later maybe the next day, have that conversation about poor choices and the consequences for this behavior. Children of all ages may experience depression, but teens are especially vulnerable and at risk for self-harm and for suicide. Parents, teachers, and all caring adults need to be attuned to recognizing the changes that are associated with these serious problems. Suicide is a leading cause of death in teens. Depression, relationship breakups, and struggles with sexual orientation are all associated with increase in suicide risk. When facing challenges, such as a parent's deployment, an illness, or financial difficulties, teens may sometimes be self-absorbed and focus on their own social experience, yet at other times they rise to the occasion and help their families through the adversity. Recognizing that inconsistency is the norm at this age can help us appreciate the best of a teen's behavior and be understanding about the lapses. In the process of facing challenges as a family, teens may learn the most valuable life lessons. This is the end of the high school video. Please take a moment to rate this video and let us know if it was helpful to you. Also, 
let us know if you'd recommend it to another parent or a friend. We appreciate your feedback. Thank you.